My fiance passed away and now his sister mother wants half my house. What should I do? This is OKOP where we read the craziest stories on earth. I'm Sam and John, Sophia. What should OP do? Ask your sister mother. Yeah. Also, is a sister mother... Your sister and your mother? I think that's that's part of the mystery. All right. That we have to decipher. Well, let's unfold this mystery. There's only one way to find out. Spell that team! So, throw away 9999 says, my fiance was in a car accident about a week ago. He has a 50-50 chance of surviving, though things have started to look up. His sister is also his birth mother. <gasps> Explain. Wait. She got pregnant at 13 and his grandparents adopted him. So legally, she is his sister. She has never had any involvement in his life. His adopted parents died three years ago. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. I'm so sorry. This is a whole can of yeah. worms. <laughs> it is. My fiance and I have two children together and own a house. We have been together since we were 13 and are getting married this October. What's with everyone being together since they were 13? With everyone? Wait, not for 13 years. They were together since they were since 13. We have been together since we were 13. The same yeah, age long, wow. as the sister mother was wow. when they got pregnant. Wow. Damn, they were just 13 was the age. 13 was, was the, the age. age. Our house is nearly paid off and I can't afford to pay half of the house equity to her by myself. I have no idea what to do or if she even has a stake in the house. He is 23 and does not have a will. Okay, so yeah. backing up, backing up. So basically the fiance has a 50-50 chance of dying. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. The fiance and OP own a house together. Right. Which they've been, and they've been together since they were 13. House is nearly paid off and basically if he dies, if the fiance dies, then the equity goes to the, the sister, sister mother, mother and she can't buy the sister mother out of the house if he dies. Wow. Oh my God. That's stressful. He also has a life insurance policy that she wants half of. I can't get a lawyer to talk to me without coming in for a $600 consult. I'm hoping someone can give me some kind of direction so I can stop worrying about my children and me becoming homeless and focus on my fiance. This is in Ohio. Thank you. Please pray or send good thoughts my fiance's way. I will update you on his condition as I find out more. And there is some more stuff in the thoughts. comments and a juicy update. What do you think OP should do? First of all, sending good thoughts. Yeah. Sending praying that thoughts. all yeah. ends up okay and that it's okay. the positive 50% in yes. the outcome. Yeah. I feel like we we, as lay people, yeah. we don't know the law. No. Know the law. I don't think we know what we're doing. Like, like we, I mean, we can just speculate. Oh, yeah. All feelings, no facts. Who does know? Who? Brad, Brad the, the divorce, divorce lawyer. <laughs> Perfect syncopation. Brad the divorce lawyer. He'll settle your divorces. We never got him on yet. It's true. Thank you for calling. Please leave a message at the phone. All right. So I met a lawyer at the gym that I've been trying to call. He's been dodging my calls. He said he wanted to be on the podcast, but maybe he doesn't. If you're a lawyer and want to be the divorce lawyer that we call whenever we have a lawyer question, please comment below. That's right. Comment lawyer. Comment lawyer. Okay. So we do have some comments. Okay. Commenter. You are not married. Is he on the birth certificate of the children? Generally, children have precedence over parents for inheritance. So it would actually go to the children okay. instead of That's sister right. mother. Yeah. The Ohio interstate rules are if a descendant is survived by a spouse and no surviving children or descendants of deceased children, the entire estate goes to the spouse. So basically, if there's no kids or grandkids, the estate goes to the spouse. Right. If a descendant is survived by a spouse and one or more children or their descendants, and if all the children who survive or who have descendants are also the children of the surviving spouse, the entire estate goes to the surviving spouse. So basically, if you have kids, if you don't have kids, it both goes to the spouse. Oh. Mm. If a descendant is survived by a spouse in one child or the child's descendants, and if the surviving spouse is not the natural or adoptive parent of the child, the spouse receives the first 20000 from the estate plus one half of the remainder of the estate. The balance of the estate passes to the child, or if the child is deceased, the child's descendant. So Basically, if the spouse is not on the birth certificate of the children, then 20,000 goes to the spouse plus half. Yeah. And then the other half to the children. So in no circumstance does it ever go to a sister mother. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Where is the sister mother law? No, let, we're we're going to keep going through the law book. If a descendant is survived by a spouse and more than one child of their descendants, the spouse receives the first 60,000. So basically our children are two in one. Does this basically mean my children and I can continue to live in our home? Or is there some kind of legal process that has to take place for half the equity? I really appreciate your help. As the parent of your children, you also get to manage their assets, half of your house until they turn 18. So you're going to be okay. Life insurance is all yours if you're the name beneficiary. 
beneficiary. After your fiance pulls through, you should probably both get wills done so you can be sure in the future. Mm -hmm. So there is a juicy update. Oh, juicy update. But it seems like the sister mother's coming after regardless yeah. of what the law says. But at least we know now that the law is on OP side. Seems like OP will be covered. Seems yeah. like it. Seems yeah. like it. Seems like it. But let's get into this juicy update. Juicy update. My post got a decent amount of attention. I thought I would update since I still get really sweet messages from people wishing me well Aww. slash praying for me and my family. My fiance, now husband, did pull through. Yay! Oh, oh, he's currently in our yeah. backyard setting up a tent to camp out with our two and three-year-old boys. Aww. He was in a coma for over a month and the doctors were pretty sure he would never wake up. His recovery was slow and he still goes to physical therapy four times a week, but he's pretty much back to normal now and we couldn't be happier. Although it was a horrible thing to go through, it changed both of us for the better. You don't realize how much the small things matter until they're about to be taken away from you. He was appalled by his sister mother's actions when I finally discussed it with him. We recently both made wills and made sure there is no chance sister-in-law or brother-in-law will get any money if both of us were to pass or God forbid our children too. We also chose godparents for our children and we are expecting a baby girl. Wow. I really appreciate all the sweet, thoughtful messages I was sent. They definitely made me feel better on bad days to know how many people were praying for him. That's Sweet. I That's love such that. a happy ending. Yeah. And there is some stuff from the commenter about the legal stuff. So oh. commenter says, what did the lawyer you call the next day of your post tell you? How did your husband's sister react when he woke up? Was she a problem for him through his recovery? So Opie said, I actually used a lawyer that PM me on Reddit. So private message me. He offered his services free of charge. Wow. That is Awesome. The power of Reddit. Is that like pro bono? Is that yeah. what that means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ironically, he only lived one town over. He was wonderful. He pretty much told me what everyone on the original thread told me. He went over our deed, life insurance, etc. He would discover that there was holes that the sister mom's lawyer could exploit, but wanted to wait to see what would happen with my husband before we really began to worry. She left a few days after I made the original post and did not return to visit even after he had woken up. Did sign a do not resuscitate. There was nothing I could do, but thank God my husband did not need it. Oh. Oh my God. That's so effed. The sister mother basically wanted the husband to die. To get, to get his the money. money. That's horrible. Wow. Not only did was she like actively trying to get it while he's, you know, yeah. they weren't sure what was happening with him. Yeah. But she I mean, it's not necessarily like the worst thing to say, like to get a do not resuscitate. Like I know my no. mom wants me to pull the plug. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. From, she, yeah. If, if my mom is ever in a state where she is in a coma, she's like, just pull the plug, please. No, yeah. wait. No. Yeah. Yeah. We've but talked about this with our mom. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, but like it's clear. I mean, it seems clear that that's not what like. I mean, the husband wasn't in a place where. Yeah, yeah, and I'm glad that twenty three years old. Twenty three yeah. is not insane. Yeah. That's so a lot to go. Through. She did try to have us cover her legal costs. She's still threatening us with small claims court, but that is still ongoing. Still small claims court. Oh my god. Edit. I forgot to add. We really don't hear much from her because she's currently in jail <laughs> on possession charges. Oh my. Oh my god. She was arrested in May and will get out in December. December. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. That was a big detail. Yeah, that yeah. Really <laughs> seems like an absolute piece of work. Truly. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. I don't have a sister or mother like that. And especially <laughs> not a sister mother like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not your mother. Not the double whammy. Double whammy. But man. Yeah. Pretty bad. Yeah. That's kind of that's insane. Really yeah. But I think, but John, like you got ending. another story for us. I think I do. <gasps> My friend lost a thousand dollars because of me and I don't feel bad about it. Should I? Sam, Sophia, should they feel bad? I mean, a thousand dollars is a good amount. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of money. That's I'd be upset. Nothing. I'd yeah. be upset if someone lost a thousand I once dollars. had a friend tell me, he said this is not investment advice, but I took his investment advice and mm. I lost two grand. <gasps> and it went to zero. And when did he pay you back? Oh my Never. That's really? Son of a bitch. Should we sue him? We should. Let's Small lawyer up. Don't invest into random crypto projects. <laughs> oh. I mean, I could have told you that. I think no. I did tell you that. Yeah. I was about to put like all my money in it too. That's insane. But come rockets going to the moon. <laughs> that is a shit coin. Dang it. Lost all my money. Well, there's only one way to find out what happens in this story. Spill that tea. And this comes from the unpolitical. They say, I am part of a specialized friend group where we all share the same hobby. I'm part of a very specialized friend group. A special set of skills. Is it D&D? &D? <laughs> it might be. Now, this is not really 
really a hobby, but I don't want to give out personally identifying information if I state what it really was. Oh, come on. Standy. Now, I was really excited to join this group as I've been an avid hobbyist for over six years. I got to meet the entire group minus Mike, and we all get along great. Who's Mike? Who's Mike? I think we're about to find out. <gasps> Pass Mike the mic. It was an easy transition into the group, and I was having a ton of fun. Finally, after about a month after joining, I met Mike. Mike was... Okay. Okay. No red flags yet. Pretty tough to get to know though. Like pulling teeth, but I just kind of ignored it and I kept moving on with everyone else. Meanwhile, Mike was really inconsistent with showing up twice to group meetings, so I didn't really get to what know him. What is the meeting? I want to know. Uh, this is so vague. Hmm. What, I want to know what the meeting what is. What activity could be so niche that you can't even say what it is? Yeah, you're like, the second that I tell you what this activity is, you'll find me. You'll know. And yeah, you'll, you'll know where I live. British coin knitting. Cool. May make knits of British coins. Mm, that is very specific. That's pretty specific. Right? Look it up. Butthole art. I mean, that sounds specific. pretty popular That sounds me. pretty popular. Yeah. Butthole art? I feel like you could find a lot of that. Yeah. What, what sides of the internet are you guys on? <laughs> I feel like you could find a lot of that. Uh, the artistic side. I don't know. I would, I, someone who isn't me yeah. would know a lot about butthole art. <laughs> butthole art for beginners. Now, throughout the years, Mike has had an infamous birthday party that he would invite the group to, except for me. The first year, I was okay with it because I had just joined. I was about two weeks in. Yeah. Yeah, two weeks in. Come on. Second year, I forgot about it until everyone was talking about it and then asked me why I didn't go. Well, I wasn't invited. My. Ooh, that's awkward Is to be that... like, hey, why didn't you come to the party? Yep. A little red flag. Yeah, Mike. Mike. Red Mike. flag for you, Mike. First red flag on the field. Ooh. Third year, same thing. I wasn't invited. So that one stung a little bit, and I made it my mission to really try and get to know him a bit more. However, it was never reciprocated and proved to be a difficult task. Ooh, Mike's secretive. Do we have any tinfoil hat conspiracies as to why Mike hates OP? OP? Mike? Potentially. Maybe Mike has the hots for OP and can't contain <gasps> oh, his Mike's love old. for her. And so, he's, <laughs> and so he's like, I'm just gonna exclude her because if she's around too much, I'll just be bricked up the whole time in my heart. An Angelica Arnold situation. Who's Angelica From Hey Arnold. Arnold. I forgot. We didn't grow up with TV. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I know what Hey Arnold is. So, so I but I don't know that it's, reference. It's, uh, in, a, in a classic children's cartoon, Hey Arnold, there's the main character Arnold and then Helga who is, Helga, sorry, Helga who is obsessed with Arnold and has a gum shrine of his giant football shaped head. Damn. So <laughs> find you a lady that makes you a gum shrine. <laughs> yeah, right? Why don't women make gum head shrines anymore? You know, I bet someone in this you watching this right it. now. You know about it. That's I, the point. <laughs> let, let me know. Put in our subreddit the gum shrine of either John and I. <laughs> And we'll react to it on the show. Please don't. Someone said they had a movie star crush on you, John. A movie star? Oh. What's a movie star crush? I don't know. A crush on a movie star? Oh, well. He's taken, folks. That's correct. <laughs> so get out of here. But let's get back to Mike and maybe the secret lover of OP. We will have yet to see. The problem was the guy runs hot and cold. He's overly dramatic on some days and quiet as a mouse on other days. One time he'll get mad at you if you hug him. Another time he'll be in your face all excited telling you about the latest gadget he got. Then the next time you see him, he's the complete opposite. Super huggy and barely talks. You'll ask him questions about himself and he will either give you one word or vague answers. This is not just to me, but to everyone. And you never know which mic you're going to get on any given day. Mike, like a box of chocolates. <laughs> you never, you never know, know what you're going to get. get. <laughs> Life is like a box of mics. <laughs> <laughs> Mike is like a box of boxes. Uh, you a never, box is like a mic. <laughs> you mic. never box the mic in box. Chocolate is like mic in a box. <laughs> you eat it. Uh, I want to eat out, Mike. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Back to buttholes. Yeah, there we go. That's a butthole. Uh, like, come on. Finally, I asked the group about him and their thoughts, and they all said exactly what I said down to the letter. I followed up with, why is he in this group? Aww. Damn, OP's trying to out Mike. A siege. Technically, he was with the starting group members and has never left, so everyone just tolerates him. Bro, I feel like OP That's is so destroying sad. Mike's social yeah, life. Yeah, poor Mike, like, honestly. Yeah, I never liked Mike either. I, I guess we all like, why is Mike here? here? Let's get Mike out of here. Maybe that's why Mike didn't want OP because yeah. Mike realized that OP would just turn everyone in the turn friend group against, against him. him. That's true. That's like kind of sad though. Like if 
you were just kind of vibing and you're, you know, you're being Mike. You're just being Mike. And then you find out all of your friends just barely tolerate you. Well, but there's like that one thing where it's like every friend group has the one asshole that no one likes. Every friend group has a mic. Every friend group has a mic. That's true. Are you the mic? Are you the mic? Put in the comments down below. On next episode (laughs) of OKOB at tonight at seven. Now, for our meeting just before his birthday, I got Mike a card, wrote him a nice sentiment, and bought $10 worth of scratchers. <laughs> oh, wait. Universally known as the worst birthday gift. Oh, yeah. So me and I were talking yeah. about this in another episode, yeah, scratchers how like, are lottery bad. tickets are like the worst gift. Yeah, but also I like that OP is simultaneously trying to win Mike over, but also get them out of yeah, the yeah. Yes. <laughs> Make up your mind, OP. Siege or not to siege, but choose a path. So I brought this gift with me, and he didn't show. I came home and told the hubby that I was disappointed and a little mad that once again, he doesn't show and that holds back the group dynamic for the evening. Also, Mike wasn't there for a third time in a row, which is also a rule break within the group. Oh, what is because this? this is the niche. It's for the niche. Oh. So they need him there. Oh, so it is kind of like Maybe D&D. Maybe it is like D&D. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know why that would... Well, if OP someone doesn't can't. show up for games consistently, Yeah, if someone doesn't it does, show up for D&D, it really... It does it, mess it, up it the does, dynamic. It does mess up the dynamic. Yeah. So out of my frustration, I decided to scratch the scratch offs myself. To my surprise, every single card was a winner. What? Whoa. I technically won $1,012 and I was so excited. Oh my God. This is the fourth year and he celebrated his birthday month in August. Didn't invite me again, but at this point, I am no longer offended or hurt by it. I don't want to go. It do, yeah. Yeah, it sure sounds like you're not offended or hurt. I am no longer offended. Not obsessed. I, I'm just writing an entire Reddit post about it. Now, I didn't want to go to the birthday. It's almost sure. Didn't yeah, even want to yeah. go. It sounds like you don't want to. Didn't I, even I mean, want to go to the birthday. I didn't, didn't want to go. I hate the birthday. Mike, and I'm not offended. I don't care at all. I'm just writing an entire Reddit post about this thing. It's almost mid-September, and he's endlessly complaining on social media right now on how broke he is from the two parties that he threw. Now his cars need a repair, totaling one thousand. And he's basically crying for anyone to donate him some money. Mm. Yeah. Quick pause Tiny right here. Tiniest and Mike. Do we donate the money? Yes or no? No. No. Fuck Mike. No, he didn't come to the D&D session. Yeah. He also didn't invite OP to four birthday yeah. parties. Yeah. Why would what? I help yeah. someone who didn't invite me? Like, no, 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 no. I wouldn't. No, no, no. But can you take back the gift? Mike wasn't there. Mike didn't invite OP to the birthday. Mike wasn't there. Yeah, we, Does Mike know that OP gave a gift? Not yet. Yeah, I just don't we just, know. We're not buy sure. some more scratch tickets for him. Yeah. There we go. yeah. <laughs> well, I kept laughing at his post because had he shown up to our meetings, he would have had the money to pay for his car repair. Also, no one in the group knew that I bought the card and that I had some winning lotto tickets. Good. Keep it secret. Yeah, keep it secret. Yes. Quiet down. And there's two quick relevant comments before the juicy update. (gasps) Juicy Uh, update. Juicy Juicy update. Juicy update. Juicy update. I like the the jingle ideas. Juicy update. Juicy update. Juicy update. Beautiful. Ba 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 ba. Juicy update. Juicy update. Juicy update. (laughs) Keep going. Uh, Let's keep going. Okay. So Opie says he wrote in our private group chat asking for some financial help. I responded with, fuck you. (laughs) I'm praying for you right now. Praying hands emoji. Honestly, if he was a nicer person, I would have held onto the card and lotto tickets for him. We have a meeting tonight and he's not going even though someone offered him a ride. And finally, someone mentioned if the group should tell him. Opie said, says he seems like the type of guy that would hold a grudge or go off on a tirade on how he is owed the money. Again, he's super dramatic and there's no telling on how he will react to this news. We have a juicy update. You do not need to tell him. No, don't tell him. Now, we've we've figured out that we don't want to tell him, right? Yeah. Do we want to lead the coup to kick him out of the group? Yes. I think OP starts going around and it's like, hey, did you hear that like Mike was asking for money again? Did you hear that Mike was poor? (laughs) No. Oh, God. Oh, God. We can't have a poor no, 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 no. It's, like, um, it's like it's just like a little like whispers. Well, I mean, if Mike's not showing up
up to D and D like consistently. It, it, yeah. it is affecting the game. We've established that this is D and D. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are deciding. It, it is affecting D&D. the game. It's really annoying when people don't show up for D and D. Yeah, and it can sit like he's missed like multiple in a D&D row. D and D is all about scheduling. I would say probably needs to show some commitment or he should leave. Yeah, yeah, I would say, hey, Mike, sorry if you don't come to them, we just have to kick you out. Yeah. Ultimatum. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't I come, we can't. I, I'm I'm a uh, for Mike Koo. Mike Koo. Pro Mike Koo. Overthrow Mike. Mike. Overthrow Mike. Overthrow Mike. Mike. Well, we have a juicy update. Let's see if it happens. Squeeze that juice, John. So, not sure if anyone remembers or cares about my previous post from a few months back, but I now have an update. We care. We care. I care. One of the updates that happened in my previous post was that his aunt gave him $1,500 to get his car fixed. He went shopping and bought a dog in an outfit. What about he the car? A dog? And a $200 outfit. And also, like, a dog is more money that he just increased all of his costs. So, so. So he still does not have a car, but I belong to his social media and he easily gets around town and out of the city. So he has some type of transportation, but I know it's not his own car that's still needing repair. Oh his my God. Slide. He's a lost cause, this Mike. My God. Uh, now, on to the update that happened on Wednesday. So this past week was our Secret Santa gift exchange. Wouldn't you know it, I got him and he got me gifting again. He didn't show up. So now I'm without a gift exchange and I just said in my head, screw it. I was prepared for this and bought something that I liked, which were more lottery tickets. I scratched them off in front of everyone and I won $75. Oh my God. Dang, Opie Opie is is on a Opie, winning can streak. I go to like a casino with you? Yeah, yeah, for real. Take all of us, please. I was super excited and everyone blasted it on social media. He contacted me this morning saying that he couldn't make it last night because his dog was sick, the one he recently purchased for the aunt's money, and he had my gift ready. He was excited to receive the $75 because he really needed it. I wonder what his wow, present wow. was. Yeah. I know. I would say, what's your present for me? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. What'd you, get? Worth? what'd you get me? Yeah. Oh, I, it has to be a surprise. Got her like a dollar. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't respond. Meanwhile, he posted on his social media that he was out with friends that night. So I guess he forgot that we are connected on social media? Question mark. Last night, we had a special meeting that was pre-planned for months. We did the Secret Santa exchange in the week because we knew we wouldn't be able to celebrate it last night. He shows up, gives me a big hug, chit chats in the most friendliest way ever. Fake as fuck, Fake. Mike. Which he has never done with me before. So it just looks and feels like someone completely sucking up to me. He eventually asked me directly directly for the money and doesn't even have the gift he's supposed to give me in exchange. Uh, Call uh, the gift exchange. Uh, uh. Mike, it's not like he had a backpack or a bag that it was in. Him. Okay, great. So where's the money I was to win for my gift exchange? Me. Oh, don't worry about the gift exchange. I'm fine. And I walked away. Oh my God. Holler Ooh. move. Don't worry Ooh. about the gift exchange. I'm fine. Tuck the hand. That's all I said. It didn't even make complete sense to me when I thought about it later, but I left him dumbfounded. He tried tried to complain about it to the others in the group, but they were just not having it. Oh, nice. Mike has used all of his favors. For Mike real. Mike is down on his luck. He's down bad. With no collaboration, they all said basically the same thing. You hardly ever show up, and when you do, you are not 100% in. You rarely talk to OP when she is here, and now you want her to hand over $75 for a gift you do not even have here for her. She had nothing to open and was left out. She owes you nothing. There we Good go. Friends. Finally, some yeah. Sense. Yes. yes. I have a feeling that this will not be the last. I will hear of it, but I will stand my ground. Thanks for reading. And we close it out with some relevant comments, but hit us. Let's get into <laughs> it. <laughs> no, wait, hit me, daddy. <laughs> All right. Bazinga Ben says the gall of someone to turn up and ask for money all just for $75 as well. No shame at all. OP says, lol, that's how I felt. We've had somewhere around nine meetings since my last post and he only came to 
one. The one where we all picked the Secret Santa names. Convenient. For him to not show up was not surprising because he's insanely infrequent, but it did suck that everyone had a fun gift to open but me. I was really looking forward to it. I had no issues with enjoying mine, and I still had a really great time that night. Hunstrom says, I wonder what kind of reaction you'd get if he knew about the thousand dollars. OP, I had a feeling that he would have gone into the dramatics if I told him about the 1K. He is just a draining person to begin with, so keeping that quiet felt like the best option, and it was great. I had a bill that I was trying to pay off for forever, and that covered it. When we had the gift exchange on Wednesday, I knew I would have everyone's support if I won everything. I thought the most I would get would have been a free ticket, but $75 wasn't bad at all. That's gas or a week's worth of groceries for me, so no complaints. And finally, Brew UO Wife says, can you buy some lotto tickets for me to scratch off? I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Lol, I need your lotto luck. Opie says, actually, I keep buying them at the same Walmart by my house when leaving the store. I normally end up with some type of winnings, but I don't consistently play all the time. I've always loved giving some lottery tickets as gifts because no one ever gets deflated when receiving it. Plus, it gives them the hope to win something big. Uh, I don't know. I, don't I think know. lottery tickets are a bad present. Yeah, I think they're about it. I'm sorry. We've, we've gotten lottery yeah. tickets as present and we won nothing. I'm nothing. It's a, it's a fun like stocking stuffer type of gift, like a little gift. And not only is it not fun to not win, but also you have to go to the gas station. Yeah. You have to go I to the gas station. I actually like going to the gas station. Well, no, no like the, going to the gas station is not like bad. It's just like you have to do work. Yeah. Yeah. Why are you <laughs> making me do work for this present? And then you don't win anything anyways. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. We don't like it. So quick question. How would you go about kicking Mike out of the group? What would you say? What would you do? I would say, Mike, you're trash. You've always been trash. No one likes you. No one ever liked you. Leave. No. See, what I do, it's a little more subtle. Okay. Talk to me. We've already established the playing D&D. &D. Yes. Yep. Whoever is the DM of the group starts playing a really hard battle oh. and then they kill Mike off. For good. And wow. For good. Mm, that, now smart. that's a true coup. But Mike wouldn't even know because he never shows up. Yeah, that's true. That is true. But you know what I know? What? That Sophia has a story for us. Boy, do I. Let's hit it. I didn't share all the inheritance with my husband and I don't care. Am I the a-hole? Well, actually, no. I, I'm pretty sure that we learned in another story that inheritance goes straight to the person who is inheriting right. it. Yes. And not necessarily to both parties. And it's kind of up to them because it's like, hey, you know, my wish is for my grandson to receive this yeah, or whatever. not my grandson. Not, and Not old Baller Jane over cooking. there. Yeah. So, oh, man, it really depends on the context. But if I am blindly guessing, um, blind guess. I'm going to say OP, not the a-hole. I'm going to say the a-hole. Oh, Ooh. I'm going to say the a-hole. We got a little contest. Let's see what happens. A little contradiction here. There's only one way to find out, though. Spill that tea. So BGNMM, BGNMN, BGNMN. Just, just rip through it. BGMNMNM says. BGNMNM one four eight Z seven V zero says. I forty female have been married to my husband thirty nine male for six years. Before we got married, I was financially independent, making good money at a job I'd had for twelve years. After we got married, I became financially dependent on him for two reasons. One, I got pregnant very soon after our wedding and we made the decision that I would quit my job then because it involved daily exposure to toxic chemicals. You don't Ouchie. want the baby to experience that. Nope. Yeah, you don't no. want a little Hulk baby, a mutant <laughs> baby. <laughs> And two, we moved closer to family when our son was born to a place where there were no jobs available for my skill set. So I put my career on pause to stay home with our son for a while. Transitioning from financial independence to depending on my husband's income for everything was difficult for me. I worked on rebuilding my career for the past three years and am now making some money again, but not as much as I was making before. He earns three times more than I do. All our accounts are shared and he manages all the money. We're saving to buy a house and part of that effort includes limiting our recreational spending, clothes, hobbies, etc. I often go over my monthly personal spending budget and it stresses both of us out. Him because he sees all of that overage as lost money that could have gone towards a down payment and me because I'm not used to someone else having a say in how I spend money. What is she spending it on? I'm, I'm I don't curious. know. Just hmm. recreational activities like clothes, hobbies, etc. I know something else that's recreational. Sports. <laughs> Cheating. <laughs> a secret husband. Gotcha. 
Last year, my dad was killed in a terrible highway accident by an impaired driver. Oh, jeez. I'm, so, I'm very sorry, OP. As a result, I am receiving a settlement payment and an insurance payment. The settlement is a larger amount of money than the insurance payment, about twice as much. I told my husband I want to put the settlement money into our savings for a house and the insurance money into a separate account for myself. This surprised him and made him uncomfortable. He gave two reasons. One, we pulled all our resources since getting married. Two, me having a separate account made him worried that I am planning to flee the relationship. He also pointed out that I have habitually overspent my personal spending budget and suggested that I consider paying that money back into our house savings instead of keeping it for myself. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, actually, before we go on, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, ooh. Okay, on, on red who? flag on who? I think the husband. Mm, because yeah. I'm guessing, and it sounds like they didn't have separate finance accounts yeah. going into the marriage. Yeah. So now it feels like it. But if they had started off that way, it wouldn't have been a deal or an issue. Yeah. Right? I agree. But... She was fine having joint finances when she wasn't like didn't have any income. But she did have an income. She just had less of an income than him. So she was fine. She was still contributing. Then, well, then she was still. You know, she taking- was. She was fine having. Uh, she, like like it feels like she was fine even when she, if she had less income, she was fine sharing it when she had less. But now that she has more, she's not fine sharing. Well, it doesn't seem mm. like she has more. She just got insurance money, and I feel like. Well, now she has more money. Yeah, I'm, I'm with John. I think if it's already been a problem for the husband with like this oh, like overspending budget stuff then this can just be the insurance money can just be for that right for her you know, like, like for personal her, yeah, whatever for her she personal wants to stuff, do so it's not a problem yeah sam is making a decent argument so it's like hmm. yeah i don't know i think you just have to go into a relationship with those separate accounts separate and accounts. then one joint account i don't think you have to do anything i think it's your relationship and you can do what you want Ooh, <laughs> that is just what relationship and also business people say is that's, that what they say? Yes, they say have separate two jo- uh, two separate accounts and then a joint account. Mom and Dad I feel have like one I've account. I've heard that advice. I know Mom my parents do that as well. Though. Just one? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yes, I, Mom. <laughs> She'll love that. <laughs> she loves our calls. Hey, Mom. Hi. I have a question. What? Do you and Dad have personal like like accounts? What do you mean? Do you share all of your accounts, or do you have like per- like do you have like like a mom account and a dad account? And then a joint account. And a joint account. Or do you have... No, we have it all together. All together. Why did you decide on that versus having like separate? Well, we we had separate when we were first... When we were first together before we got married or... Yeah, before we, before we had you, we had that because we didn't have a house. But once we had a house and all of that stuff, you, you have to combine it all because, it, you know, and you have kids, you combine it all because you're working together as a team. It doesn't make sense to have, okay, this is my account and I, I'm using money on this. Mm. You have to kind of like be on the same page for, you know, what so you're doing. So if your dad inherited money, it would just go into that joint account, right? Um, we, we might have it, keep it separately just so that it's, you know, I mean, technically it is, technically, I guess that is dad's, but you know, I mean, when you're together, you, you would look to doing things that benefit the, the family unit. Right. So thanks yeah. mom. No, I, you're on OKOP. <laughs> Oh, what? <laughs> you didn't tell me that. You right. two were like, I love you. you. I love you. Yeah, no, that's terrible. Bye, mom. Yeah, that was a really Bye. good answer. That was a great answer. What? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so it seems like. Uh, I feel like I've heard of, though, the separate. Yeah, okay. I think that okay, was kind yeah. of answered. Does that, yeah. change, does that change your answer at all? No, I feel like mom no. kind of agreed, like, about the inheritance stuff with OP. Well, she bit. said that, yes, it would technically be dad's, but as a family unit, you should keep it together. It seems like, yeah, she was in favor of all and all, all together. I would yeah. love to know what the audience thinks. Yeah. Put your answers in the comments below. John and I both raise red flags for either party. Maybe both of them are red flags. Yeah, maybe. maybe just one. Maybe, maybe you think, Sam, you're a dumbass, cotton-headed ninny mugg- muggins, <laughs> and you deserve to die. Let <laughs> us know in the comments below. Oh, don't say that, guys. <laughs> guys. Come on. Don't do it. But here's the thing. The settlement money I plan to put into our house savings amounts to more than 18 times the amount of money I owe from going over my personal spending budget. When I pointed that out, he shifted to talking about other accounts we have that would be healthier if we put the insurance money there instead of into a private account for me. I tried to explain my reasoning to my husband. My dad and I were close and his death was traumatic for me. This money can't ease the pain of losing him, but it could ease some of the pain I've experienced from losing my financial independence. It would give me a little peace 
place at a time when I feel lost in grief. Lastly, if the tables were turned, I wouldn't question his wishes concerning money that came to him through the death of a loved one. Am I the a-hole? Hmm. See, I think that... Does he have his own personal account? It doesn't seem like no. it, right? It seems like it's all together. Sounds like it. He doesn't have, have a personal... They have multiple accounts, but I but think But he doesn't joint. have a personal account. All it's together. all together. However, I will say, bringing up the point of he... I think he had said when she got pregnant, like, you should uh, quit your job. Only because the baby... She was working with toxic chemicals and yep. the baby would be exposed to that. Yeah, and, but and, it's a, you know, like, having to quit your job, I, like, to become a mother is still, you know... Completely agree. Yeah. But how I'm imagining it is they have joint accounts... If they were to ever divorce, she gets half of everything they get the, that they have, unless they have a prenup, which it doesn't sound based yeah. on the relationship dynamic. They do. Doesn't sound like it. Yeah. So I feel like that is enough of a, like a safety barrier for her. I don't know. What do, you, what do you think, John? Yeah, I think I'm definitely still pro like in a relationship, people having like their own separate accounts just so they can do things without having yeah. to constantly check yeah. with if each it's other. Always, if it's, it seems like he's always being like, well, you're spending too much. You're spending too much. And yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's I'll problem. just yeah. take well, some money for myself. It seems like they and, agreed on a budget. That is the yeah. only thing is that they agreed to not do that. So in this case, you know, I, I'm I'm thinking a little bit, a little bit everyone's the a-hole because they agreed upon it. So I feel like the wife should be more acknowledging of that. Yeah, that's and true. And the husband, I feel like... Like, I don't know that it's really the end of the world that he doesn't get access to this money. It yeah. definitely isn't. But I think what's happening is the contract of the relationship has changed only once the tables have flipped, which I don't think is fair. Right. You know, I think I'm on your side, John, because I think, again, she just had a baby and she had her financial freedom taken away from her when she was making because before she was making a lot of money. But she hasn't she doesn't have her financial freedom taken away from her. Well, she does. They're just agreeing on a budget together. Well, as yeah, a yes. Unit. Absolutely. I think also, again, I think that you agree on a budget, you have to stick to that. But also yeah. I understand the side of Not losing even the that budget. Financial. It's yeah. the whole, the whole philosophy of like all yeah. of our money is in it together, which yeah. that is going against it. So I would say I'm giving a little a-hole to both sides. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would, I'm, yeah. yeah. Why do you think the husband is the a-hole? I think the husband is the a-hole because I don't know how critical it is that money needs to be there. And I feel like if I, I was in that position with this whole circumstance. I don't know if I would really care or be bothered per se. I, think I would probably be bothered if we had a joint, like if we had shared everything and decided like, hey, this is like a re the relationship style mm -hmm. that we have is we share everything. Anything I make is yours. Anything you make is ours, you know, like, like yeah. just like all together. And then suddenly she wins the lottery. He's like, actually, this is mine. You know, like that would feel like it, like it would go against the context of the relationship that we started. Yeah. So also, it's not the lottery. It's from her dad. Okay. But even so, like, I mean, specifically, it's like parents who just, you know, traumatically was taken from her. Sure. So it's a little bit more closely, you know, there's a little bit more stake in that. Yeah. Case. And obviously, like she can do whatever she wants. Yeah. I think the effect, though, of her doing this is she's undermining the context yeah. that they originally set out with the relationship. It's not a bad thing to do if they already had separate finances. That's like, that's fine. I think what's happening, though, is she's now setting setting a different precedent. Yeah. I think they just need to have a more longer conversation. <laughs> I think they need to talk it out. Yes. Yeah. I would love to know from, from y'all what you think, like who's yeah. the a-hole in the situation? Mm -hmm. Is there one? Is there one? Are they both? And also for anyone who's married, like how do you split finances yeah. or do you split finances what works for you guys? or is it all together? Like what yeah. works for you? Would love to know how different relationships handle this kind of stuff. And also I'm really sorry uh, for your loss, OP. Yeah, that's true. That's true. We love you. But you know what we're never sorry for? What? You having to listen to another story. Here we go. Okay, this next story actually comes from the OKOP call line. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! If you want to call us and leave your story, call 440-508-6567. But let's hear the title of the story. Hi, my name is Luck. I am calling to see if my mom is the asshole for leaving my dad after she found out he is only staying with her to try and get my grandparents' estate. Ooh. Oh, that's really bad. That's really bad. Okay, okay. Gut check. What do we feel? Is Opie's mom the a-hole? Yes. 
right? For leaving her dad after because finding out that he's only is, there for he, the estate? The mom found out OP's dad was only there for the money. Yeah, so the mom's not the a-hole. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. John's like, <laughs> yes. John's wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sounds like she's not the a-hole. She sounds like she's not the a-hole. She's not the a-hole. Uh, like well, let's hear the, the rest of her story. I'm going to read this transcription. So, my mom and I have been mistreated by my dad my whole life, and my younger brothers were treated a little better, but they still weren't treated great. Now, my mom is religious and decided that she didn't want to divorce, but it's getting to the point where when he gets angry, like throwing scissors at her, hits some doors so hard the whole house shakes and paintings fall off the walls, throwing things. She's considering divorce, but she's always stayed. My dad has now admitted to my uncle that he's only staying with my mom so as to wait for her elderly parents to pass because they are in poor health so that he can get their estate from them because they have a lot of money. My mom is unsure if she should leave first or she should wait for him to do it to like in order, I don't know, to be a better person. So would she be the asshole if she left him? I don't know if I was coherent entirely, but I hope it makes sense. Absolutely not. Okay, so to break it down, the mom has now had a revelation. Well, actually, before we break it down and maybe while we're doing so, maybe we just give a call right this second yeah. and then we can break it down with OP. Okay. Hello? Hey, Luck, uh, this is Sam from OKOP. And John. Oh my gosh. And Sophia. Hi. <laughs> how Hello. you doing? Hello, how are you doing? Um, I'm okay, how are you guys? Very good, we wanted to ask you about your story. Oh, great. I, I, I didn't think you guys would end up hearing it. So I've I guess, to all your shows, I love it. Uh, I'm oh, so thank you so you. much. <laughs> um, so Thanks look, for watching. First question, is your mom still with your dad right now? She is, she is. Oh, Why? Okay. Um, I, I couldn't tell you. I have no idea, man. I Let, maybe let's start with what are your dad's good qualities? Um, <laughs> well, well, I don't, I, he's nice sometimes. <laughs> he's nice sometimes. Okay. Oh. I want to make sure I got the, the situation correct. So basically, obviously, it sounds like ideal for your mom to leave the relationship, right? Yeah. And but and you found out that your dad is basically only staying right now. He he doesn't want to leave a relationship because he's trying to get money after your mother's parents pass away. Is that right? Yeah, that, that's about right. So basically, mm. like he ended up telling my uncle, and my uncle told the rest of us, and was like, well, "What the hell?" Yeah. <laughs> um, wow. And, and so is this your your dad's brother? No, my mom's brother. Why would he say Whoa. that? Oh my. <laughs> Wow. That's what we said. Like, he said this all to my mom's brother with a smile on his face. Ooh. And it was like, yeah, this is what my dad is a little bit like, we, we think he's a little bit off his rocker, but he's always been a little bit off his rocker. So he's not like major off his rocker. Oh, oh my God. I wow. can't imagine being like silly enough to, to yeah, say it's that. Yeah, like, if you're going to be a villain, be a good yeah. villain at and least. Also, he's telling, he's telling like Lux's uncle, who is the brother yes. of Lux's mom. I'm like, yeah, when your parents die, I'm just going to wait for Which, all the money the way, to hit. The da- like, I'm, I'm thinking the dad would probably get less inheritance if, uh, you know, well, may- maybe not, but. It would be split. It, it would be go, split, or, yeah. yeah. The or mom's guess, amount would be split. Yeah, so the, the uncle's maybe unaffected, but. Would the money go straight to your mom or do they like, do your parents share would, all the finances? It would go straight to my mom, but my mom doesn't have her own bank account. Um, so it would go into my parents' joint bank account. Oh. Meaning when, when they divorce, he would have access to it, oh. but there's been an update since I t- since I called <gasps> you guys. Oh, and I there's had a juicy update. Okay, let us know. There is a juicy update. So my mom ended up meeting with an attorney. And she's not convinced she should divorce. She's the rest of my family is like, you need to divorce this man. We will pay for the best divorce lawyer, etc. Um, Good. Yeah. So she met with the lawyer and she's like, hey, I'll just hear you out. And the lawyer's like, hey, you can protect the money. And my dad found out about this. My dad found out oh. that, like, he can, he, that she has a way to protect the money. And so he goes and he tells the rest of like my mom and then my extended family and says like, yeah, no, if um, fine. You know what? I, if I can't take the money in, in the divorce, then I'll just sue you guys. <gasps> I'll sue all of you for the money that I that I quote unquote deserve. And if you choose a Christian lawyer, I won't take it as much as you as you want because he's like cult like Christian kind of thing. Oh, <laughs> wait. So I mean, does he have any legal right to that yeah, money? Yeah, that's the question. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think he does. 
so the thing is, he's, my parents, my grandparents owned the lot, the like plot of land, um, owned a plot of land and, and had a small cabin on it, but they ended up building a bigger cabin on it. Okay. Mm-hmm. And my dad ended up was the one that like directed the build, like helped them do everything because he, he does construction on oh, the side. So he, knows so all he that. may have some claim so, because he like put like blood, sweat and tears yeah. into yeah. the cabin. Like building. give me, give me 10% for my sweat equity yeah, or something yeah, yeah. along those lines. So he ended up directing the whole thing. And this isn't like a small cabin either. This is like a million dollar cabin. Kind oh of thing. my wow. God. Million dollar <laughs> cabin. <laughs> Sheesh. Cabin. So and he's like, yeah, no, I want to sue you for at least half of it, but if you if you choose a Christian lawyer, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll go for less. Oh, well, uh, I mean, oh, nice. is your current lawyer a Christian? <laughs> not that I am aware of. Oh man, <laughs> we're not sure. We need to get God on both sides. I mean, it's not a usual question to ask your lawyer. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is yeah. true. I know you passed the bar, Christian or not. <laughs> Tell me now. It's not easy open a question. Yeah, help me with my divorce. But are you? Christian first. I don't so, know. so here's my question. Is the game plan maybe to go back to the lawyer and be like, hey, realistically speaking, how much do we think he could get if he if he sues us? And if it's like a nominal amount, most yeah. likely, do we just go ahead with the divorce and, you know, get everything yeah. routed to y- your mom initially? Or do you try to settle beforehand or try so to you don't have to deal something. with all these lawyer fees? Right. I don't know. I think my grandparents are thinking of settling with him because um, like they're the reason they're already looking at inheritance is because they don't want this happening after their past and they're Smart. Not doing yeah. great so they're not doing great my uncle or my um grandfather has, has cancer my oh, grandmother is sorry in, to hear in, that. The, so sorry. in the best of health yeah it's sad but they're like in their 90s so it's okay. yeah okay yeah they've yeah, lived a long would, life but dang it sucks that your dad like, is trying to take advantage of this terrible situation to like get hmm. money out of it yeah yeah they what, what they wanted to do was set up this cabin for like their kids yeah their yeah. kids us siblings and I, my cousins, etc. And so that we could go there for like years and years. Yeah. But you know, dad said no. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you asked yeah. us at the beginning of the call, is my mom the a-hole for wanting to leave your dad who is just in it for the money? And I feel like we have a resounding no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I would hope not. I thought not, but you know, I thought I'd check for my mom's sake because she still unsure. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, maybe you can play yeah. this episode. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Your mom is not the a-hole. Your That's mom right. is not the a-hole. At all. And she deserves she happiness deserves a and a husband that isn't after the cabin. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell her. I'll tell her you think so. Okay. Well, Luck, thank you so much for calling thank in. You. We really appreciate you. Best of luck. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. It was nice talking to you guys. I'm, it was, I'm glad to meet you. I love your show. Thank you as you well. So thank, thank you so you. much, Luck. <laughs> No problem. See ya. Have a good one. Bye. 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 Oh, I love luck. Wow. Man. Cool. That's a lot, though. That's a lot. That's a lot. That really well, is. I, you know what? I feel like Lux mom deserves happiness. Yes. Absolutely. That's the big yes. thing. That's seems the big to be thing. a path for a good outcome. Yes. There seems to be the path. It, it like does exist. Yeah. But you know what always gives us a good outcome? What? When you subscribe, because if you love us, make sure to subscribe. We love you and, and see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow. Ba, ba, ba. ba.